Hey, welcome to Verve Church for people who don't like church. It is a new year, and uh, I hope we're ready for what God is going to do with us in 2022. Are you excited? Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm Vince. I'm one of the pastors here at Verve. But who are you? Hey, w- would you share in the chat room? Uh, we- we'd love for this to be interactive and community. And so put your name, maybe where you're watching from. Just check in, say hi. Uh, I am excited for today because we are starting a brand new teaching series called Rhythm. And this series will help us make 2022 the best year ever. I really believe that. You might have some other ideas for how to make 2022 great, which that, that's totally cool. Maybe uh, you've got some New Year's resolutions, you know, goals that you've set for this year. That is not a bad thing. Um, in fact, in the chat room, uh, if you're willing, maybe share one of your news resolutions. Like, it doesn't have to be anything too private, but we all, you know, we all have something. We want to lose a couple pounds. We want to start extra, whatever it is. Uh, maybe if you want, if you're open to it, just put in your chat room uh, a New Year's resolution or goal you have for this year. So I, I've got some too. I, I've got, in fact, you, if you'll share one, I'll share uh, 10 because I've got 10 of them. Would you like to hear my top 10 New Year's resolutions for 2022. Is that cool? All right. Here they are. A top 10 New Year's resolutions for 2022. Number 10, to stop ironing my underwear while I'm wearing them. Number nine, to get some sucker to give me a dollar, then repeat 15,000 times. Number eight, I will think of a password other than password. Top 10 New Year's resolutions for 2022. Number seven, finally get through all the extra toilet paper I bought. Man, I hoarded. I got, I got some pooping to do. Sorry. Number six, I, I guess it's too late for that free Britney tattoo. Number five, no longer will I let my mother choreograph my TikTok dance videos. Mom. These moves aren't cool. Number four, I will do less laundry and wear more deodorant. Uh Time efficiency. Number three, to hope it's just innocent when my kids play red light, green light, but call it squid games. Number two, finally transfer my membership from the Harry S. Truman to the Harry S. Styles fan club. Been meaning to do that. And the number one New Year's resolution of mine for 2022, gain a few pounds. Because that's a resolution I can keep. All right. Well, today I promised you a transformational truth that most people don't know or just ignore. Are you ready for it? I just want to jump in. You cool? We good? Yeah? All right. Here it is. Your life is a byproduct of your lifestyle. Bam, boom, there it is. Your life is a byproduct of your lifestyle. By life, I mean your life, your uh, experience of being human. By lifestyle, I mean the the rhythms and routines of your day to day. Like the the way you start your morning, organize your time, spend your money. Your life is a byproduct of your lifestyle. Uh, There's a, a saying in business you may have heard, Every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. There's a lot of truth there, right? Every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. Now, the the CEO of that organization might say, we've designed this system to get these results. Results, A. Okay. But if you're actually getting those results, results, B, then your system is really designed to get those results, results B. Perhaps not intentionally, but in business, you don't get the results you want. You get the results your system is actually designed to get, intentional or not. It's true in life as well. If the results that you're getting are lousy. So I mean, think, think back. You just, you just had a whole other year of your life, right? Just ended. Um, if your results of your life, if what your life looked like in 2021 is um, anxiety, stress, maybe you had a lot of tension in your relationships, 
not, not feeling close to God, uh, not physically fit. Maybe you felt, a, a lot of time you felt burnt out. Uh, maybe you had lots of bad hair days. Then there is a very good chance something about the system of your life, the, the rhythms and routines of your life is off kilter. Something is out of whack in how you organize your morning, your schedule, your budget, your relationship with your phone, how you manage your resources. Because whether you realize it or not, you have a system, a way that you are doing your life and the system you've created is perfectly designed to get the results you're getting. Your life is a byproduct of your life style. There's a, uh, a common definition of insanity, we've probably all heard, uh, it, doing the same things again, expecting a different result, right? Doing the same thing again, but this time it's gonna be different. And, and by that definition, <laughs> a lot of us are insane, right? Because we wanna change our lives, we, we, we want something different. Maybe in church, you hear about the life available to you in Jesus, and you're like, ah, I want that. But, but then we go back to living that same life style, and nothing changes. Why? Why? Because we're living in the same rhythm, the same routines. And the system we've been living by is perfectly designed to get the results we've been getting. And then we wonder, you know, what am I missing? Why does this keep happening? Why isn't my life what I want it to be? Okay, so what's the solution? What's the solution? Listen, it's, it's actually pretty simple. Not, not necessarily easy, but it's simple. If you want to experience the full, abundant life of Jesus, which pause. By the way, that is what he offers to you, okay? Listen, he, he says in John chapter 10, verse 10, I have come that they, you're they, I'm they, that they may have life and have it abundantly. And, and so he's saying, hey, if you want a full abundant life, I can give it to you. Uh, and, and then um, look at Matthew 11. He says, are you tired, worn out? Come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. He's saying, and if you don't like the way your life is going, I can help you find real life. He also said, all you thirsty ones, come to me. Come to me and drink. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. He's saying, if you feel empty, if you feel thirsty, I can give you life that flows from within. Okay, so, so back to our question, what's the solution? If you want to experience the full abundant life of Jesus, live his life style. Live his lifestyle. Jesus, Jesus' invitation to people, the, the invitation he always made to people was always follow me. He's inviting you to follow him, which means to live your life the way he did, to follow his way, to take on his habits as your own. As, as his follower, as uh, his uh, apprentice, you copy him, right? You do what he did. And if you do what he did, you'll get the results he did. It seems kind of obvious, but it's so, it's ironic, it's funny, because we don't think of it this way. Christians, for the most part, don't think this way about following Jesus, but it's really so obvious. Like, it, it would be obvious with anything else, anything else, and I'll show you. But, but for some reason, with Jesus, we think, I just need to believe in him, right? I just, I just need to have faith. 
No. No, you don't need to, need to just believe in MRI faith. That doesn't make any sense. Let, let's examine that because I think you'll realize it's crazy. It's crazy to think our lives would change in, in a good way by just believing in Jesus without doing the things Jesus did. So, so, so think about this. Um, who is someone uh, that, that you would want to follow in life? Not Jesus, but someone who you would want to follow in life. Like someone who does something that you would love to do. You, you, you admire the way they do it. You would love to have the results that they have. Like, like maybe someone you'd, like, you'd love to golf like or, or cook like or uh, decorate your home like. In, in fact, uh, you could put that in the chat. Is there anybody in life you're like, man, hero status, icon, like I would love to be able to do this like that person does. You can put it in the chat if you want. Who's, who's somebody you would love to follow in that way? So let me give you an example. Too. Let's say that you decided, man, I want to be a follower financially of, of Warren Buffett. Uh, he's considered probably the most successful investor in the world. He's worth $90 billion. When I looked it up, it's probably $100 billion today. Who knows? But, but you believe in him. You realize it will take time, but you want the results he has. Well, Warren Buffett has books sharing his investing principles, how he approaches finances. But let's say you decide you're not going to do any of that because you believe in him. I mean, you want the results he has, but you're not going to do what he does. Instead, you're just going to believe in him. Stupid, right? That'd be stupid. Obviously, if you believe in him, you should do what he does. And if you don't do what he does, you won't get the results he does, even if you believe in him, right? Obvious. Or, um, Let's say that you want to be a follower physically of Mr. Universe, Brandon Curry. Uh, he is physically fit, I, I would say, right? He, he, he kind of reminds me a little bit of someone I know. <laughs> so you believe in him. You believe in Brandon Curry. You, you realize it's going to take some time, but you want the results he has. You discover, hey, Brandon Curry has YouTube videos showing exactly his workout routine, his eating regimen, how he approaches physical fitness. But you decide, nope, I'm not going to do any of that because I believe in him. You, you want the results he has, but you're not going to do what he does. Instead, you're just going to believe in him, faith in What? That's stupid, right? Obviously, if you believe in him, you should do what he does. And if you don't do what he does, you won't get the results he does, even if you do believe in him. And so Jesus' invitation to people was, follow me. Follow me. Jesus' invitation to you is, follow me. What does it mean to follow Jesus? It means that you live the way Jesus lived. Here's uh, one way the Bible says this, or says this a lot, but um, one of the ways is in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. It says, whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus lived. And so, like, you take his life as the template for your own. Not just you believe in him, not just you want the results he had and he offers abundant life, full life. No, you are going to do what he did. To, to follow Jesus is to live the way he lived. To, to live the way he would live if he were living my life. Which means the central driving question of every Christian is, and how would Jesus live if he were me? How would Jesus live if he were me? Which means that being a Christian is something you do. It's something you do. It's not just something you believe. It's something you do. You do life the way Jesus did life because you've chosen to follow him. Which means 
It means we need to really, really look at the way Jesus did life, right? In the, um, the four books of the Bible that are like kind of like the biographies of Jesus, um, we, we see a rhythm. Jesus had a very purposeful, intentional way of doing life. Why was Jesus able to live the amazing life he did? That's why. And we need to really look at the way he did life. What was it that he did? What were the priorities he lived by? What were the habits he established? Someone has said, you may have heard this, you are what you repeatedly do. Those things you repeatedly do are your habits, and your your habits, like they, they shape who you become. So what were Jesus' habits? What did Jesus repeatedly do? Because whatever it is, that's what shaped who he became. And that's the goal. Listen, the goal is not to do the habits. We do the habits to reach the goal. The goal is to become more like Jesus, to to experience the life he had and offers to us, this abundant, full life that he offers. The goal is to love the way Jesus loved. Jesus' life, it it didn't happen just because he was Jesus. It it didn't happen by accident. Whoops. It happened because of his habits. The, The system he lived by was perfectly designed to get the results he got. And if we have the same habits, our lives will be shaped like his was. If if we live by the same system, we'll get the same results. So what what we're going to do in our new teaching series that we're starting right here today is learn Jesus' rhythm. We're going to learn the rhythms of Jesus' life and, I hope, choose to adopt them as our own. Hey, let me, um, let me show you the rest of that quote from Jesus I shared earlier. I, I just shared a part of it, but here's the whole thing. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Jesus says, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. See, Jesus makes an offer. He says, I can help you recover your life you don't get that by believing in him. He says, I will show you how to live. You need to walk with me and work with me. Watch me, watch me do life and I'll show you how to live. He says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. And I love that. He, He invites us to learn from him a new rhythm for living life. And that's what we're gonna do in this series. We're gonna learn Jesus' rhythm for living life. The system that he lived by led to the results he had. We're going to learn Jesus' rhythm for living life, and we're going to choose to follow him, to adopt his rhythms as our own. And if we do, our lives will change. We'll start to experience some life abundantly, some life flowing from within, the kind of relationship with God and the kind of um, the kind of peace and and healthy relationships, and joy, and sense of purpose that Jesus had. So you ready? Like, I'm serious. Are you ready for a new life? It is just a few rhythms away. Today, with just a little bit of time we have left, we're going to talk about just one of the six rhythms we'll explore in this series. Uh, the next five weeks, we'll, we'll dig in deeper into the other five. But today, I want to hit on one of the six rhythms that we just see repeated throughout Jesus' life. Um, if you want this life, 
come for the whole series. Make sure that you don't miss a week of the series. Come each week. So today is the rhythm of Bible reading, um, reading the Bible. With the other rhythms that we're going to explore in the next weeks, we actually see Jesus in the Bible doing it. This one's different. We actually don't see him doing it. We don't see him reading the Bible, but we know he did it. Uh, and it is reading the Bible, stu studying the Bible, internalizing the Bible. How do we know Jesus did that? That, that, it, that it was a, a spiritual habit for him, a rhythm in his life? Well, because he was constantly quoting the Bible. He would refer to Bible stories over and over, and he would quote specific verses that applied to the situation he found himself in. Like um, at one of the times, we see that uh, when, when Jesus is in the wilderness and he's tempted by Satan, which, which I know um, you hear that and you're probably like, Satan, it's a little hard to believe in, I don't know. Yeah, I get it, but, but the Bible says, that there really is a source of evil called Satan. Um, he hates God, and because God loves you, he hates you. He wants to, to keep you from God and from the life God has for you. In fact, check out how the Bible pictures it in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. It says, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And that's real. You have a spiritual enemy who is looking to devour you. You, you may wonder sometimes, like, why, why has my life been so hard? Why, why is it so difficult to make changes? Why don't I always feel close to God? Why is it possible that 2022 could actually be the worst year of my life? That's why. Because there is a source of the evil and the temptation in your life. Because your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And so I have a question. When Satan bites at you, what comes out? I know that's kind of a weird question, but when Satan bites at you, what comes out? Have you, uh, have you ever had a fruit gusher? Um, you, you bite it and this fruit juice, <laughs> probably not technically juice, but you, you bite this, this and juice comes out. Hey, wh wh why does fruit juice come out? Because fruit juice is in, right? What's in comes out out. You've, you've got to put it in if you want it to come out. Uh, you, you know what's also true? The longer you put it in, the more it's in, and the more it will come out, right? Like um, example, marinating chicken before you grill it. If you marinate it for an hour, you barely got that marinade in. When you bite it, it's barely going to come out. But if you marinate it for 24 hours, you got it in, and when you bite it, it's going to be juicy. You're going to get the flavor of that marinade. You got to put it in if you want it to come out. So, weird question again. When Satan bites at you, what comes out? When Satan attacked Jesus, when, when he bit at Jesus, the Bible came out. Um, so in, in the, the book of Matthew, we see Jesus in the desert. He's alone, and Satan views it as an opportune time to come and tempt him, to try to deceive him into going off of God's plan, off course, and, and away from the life that God had for him. Over and over, Satan tempts Jesus with, with, um, with the perfect temptations, the, the kind of things that Jesus would find tempting. Just like Satan tempts you with the kind of things you find tempting. And Jesus' response to every temptation is to quote a Bible verse. Every time. Satan throws a lie, a deception at Jesus, kind of trying to get Jesus to think the wrong things, just like he does with us. And Jesus responds every time with a truth of God from the Bible. Jesus 
defense system uh, against uh, his life going off course, against temptation, was the Bible. Jesus uh, did not sin. He, he didn't get tripped up by temptation. He, he didn't have to deal with the consequences of sinning. He, he just continued to stay on course, living out God's will. Why? Because he had built a rhythm into his life of studying the Bible. He had internalized God's scriptures. And so that's what came out. And that's the way it works, right? Uh, God tells us that in our battle against uh, sin and temptation against Satan, that we have a weapon that we can fight with. What's our weapon? How, how, can, we, how can we fight back? Listen, it's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's Ephesians 6, 17. He's saying it's the Bible. Uh, God tells us uh, elsewhere in the Bible how we can overcome temptation. Psalm 119, verse 11 says, I have hidden your word, God's word, the Bible, in my heart that I might not sin against you. Having God's word in you is a defense system against being suckered in by Satan's lies. When you have it in you, it'll come out of you. Right? It, it will come out of you when you need it most, when you're tempted, when you need wisdom, when, when you're desperate for direction, it will come out of you. But only if it's in you. It, it was in Jesus because he had a spiritual habit of Bible study, a, a rhythm of reading God's word. We need that. And I'll tell you, I, uh, I have had that now for over 30 years. I, I mean, I, I miss a day here and there, but just about every day for the last 30 years, I have studied the Bible and it has changed my life, totally changed my life. And I, I have overcome so much temptation, avoided so much sin, had so much wisdom and direction for my life. Like, I've lived a pretty awesome life for the last 30 years. Not, listen, not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not perfect. But it has been pretty awesome. And, and people might see that, hear that, and say, well, I guess you're special. You know, you're, you're so strong and you're so smart. No, not at all. I just read the Bible every day. I... I am so grateful. I don't have words to tell you how grateful I am that I have built this rhythm into my life. If you do what Jesus did, you'll get the results Jesus did, right? To, to live the life Jesus lived, you have to live like Jesus lived. We need a spiritual habit of studying the Bible, a, a rhythm of reading God's word. We need to get the Bible in us so it will come out of us. What, what I've done these last 30 years is, um, here's just a little, little some, some helpful hints. Uh, one, I read the Bible every day. Again, I, I'll miss a couple days a month maybe. Two, I read books of the Bible. The, the Bible is made up of 66 books, and uh, each book is written by a specific someone to a specific group of someones. Uh, th those people were living actual lives and had certain issues that they were struggling with. And so I read books of the Bible, not just kind of random verses, because then you get the whole context and it's more meaningful. Uh, three, I read slow. Like I'm, I'm not just like, you know, reading it to get it done. I, I like, I want to get it in me. So, so I read slow. Often I'll, I read a chapter a day usually, and, uh, and often I'll read the chapter twice and I'll ask questions as I read it. Questions like, what is this saying? Why, why, why did he write this? How, how would the original people have read this? What, what does it really mean? How can I apply it to my life? In fact, uh, I think this is so important. I, actually, Jesus thought this was so important that every year at Verve, we create a Bible reading plan for you and, and uh, a resource to help you uh, ask those questions and get the Bible in you. So if, if you go to vervecatalyst.org, and when this service is over here in a few minutes, go to vervecatalyst.org. And, uh, or if you got, maybe you're watching this on TV, you can get your phone right now and do it right now, I don't know. At that website, 
you'll find the Bible reading plan, uh, and, and you'll find that it's one chapter a day. It, probably to read a chapter, to do this, probably five, maybe 10 minutes a day. Listen, five to 10 minutes a day to change your life. Man, that's worth it. If you do the Bible reading plan, you will read through the entire New Testament in that year. Uh, the, the New Testament is the part of the Bible starting when Jesus comes. You'll read the entire New Testament in a year and one-fifth of the Old Testament. The Old Testament is a part of the Bible before Jesus came. And so what that means is, if you say, all right, I'm gonna do this reading plan, it means that in the next five years, you'll have read the entire Old Testament and the entire New Testament five times. That would really get the Bible in you. Because this needs to be a rhythm, a, a habit, something you do consistently, I would strongly encourage you to subscribe. Uh, so if you go to verbcounts.org and you hit the subscribe button, what, what that means is every morning, the chapter that, that you're reading for that day is going to be emailed to you, like a link, and, uh, and that's just a great reminder, hey, let's build this rhythm. And not only is there a reading plan, there's also some study notes and questions. We, we call it the say what, so what, now what. Say what, so what, now what. And it's there to help you read slow and to ask those questions and, and to help you apply the Bible to your life. Because God didn't give us the Bible just to be read. He gave it to us to be lived. That, that's what Jesus did. He studied the Bible. He very obviously had a rhythm of reading. He got the Bible in, and when he needed it, it came out. Jesus' life didn't happen just because he was Jesus, and it certainly didn't happen by accident. It happened because of his habits. The system he lived by was perfectly designed to get the results he got. And if we have those same habits, our lives will be shaped like his was. If, if we live by that same system, we'll get the same results. That's the goal, to, to, to become more like Jesus, to experience whew, the abundant life he came to give us. And we can do that. If, if, if we'll do that, if Jesus' rhythm becomes our rhythm. That's what we're going to do in this series. So, so be here next week. Don't miss a week. Five more weeks, man. This is going to change us. Like, like we could become who we're supposed to become and live the lives we're supposed to live. More like Jesus. Let, let's pray for that together. Let's pray. And then the band's going to lead us in one song. And then we've got a couple closing announcements for you before we go. Let's pray. God, we want more this year. We want to live better lives. We want to become better people. We want more purpose, excitement, adventure, more, more love. We want to live in love. We want to give love. God, we can have all that if we live the life Jesus lived. To live the life he lived, we have to live like he lived. So God, would you help us as we enter in this series to, to learn the rhythms of Jesus' life and choose to adopt them as our own. My prayer is that every person who is listening to this prayer right now, would choose to start having a consistent habit of reading the Bible every day. God, help us make that choice. We pray, God, that we could live like Jesus and love like Jesus because, man, he's it. We pray in his name. Amen.